We created this MAP conference for two reasons. The first reason is the explosion in cancer genomics data that's coming from uh, worldwide consortia, as well as routine clinical care, matched with the second reason, which is a rapid increase in the number of targeted therapies that are available, as well as immuno-oncology drugs that are increasingly used against a rapidly evolving cancer genome. And it's really trying to understand how the two relate to each other, how somatic aberrations in the cancer genome overlay with responsiveness or sensitivity to targeted therapies and immuno-oncology drugs and trying to better understand how cancer genomics can be implemented in the clinical setting. So the programs evolved um, around uh, ideas of new technologies and their implementation into routine clinical care, cost-benefit analyses associated with cancer genomics and increasing focus on immuno-oncology drugs as a sort of a route into uh, clinical care to enhance survival benefits and to understand how uh, a knowledge or increasing knowledge on the, in the cancer genome can be used to decipher patients who will and will not respond to these agents. Well, when, when, when one thinks about cancer cells, one has to think about not just DNA and the sort of hard wiring of genetic information into, into a cancer cell, but also how that DNA is transcribed and translated into mRNA and protein and how that protein is expressed and how you know, stochastic or chance aberrations in a cancer cell affect whether or not that protein is expressed as well. And it's really trying to understand and bring together what's going on in the cancer cell and its interaction with the environment, be it the immune system, um, host stromal cells, as well as the host germline itself and how that constrains evolution, bringing all of that information together within this sort of concept of precision oncology medicine to better understand who will and won't respond to therapy. There are many gaps. Um, there are gaps in terms of infrastructure, both nationally and in internationally, availability of um, access for patients to uh, cancer gene sequencing, cancer genome sequencing, um, gaps in our understanding of uh, the relationships between the cancer genome and the expression of, of core proteins on the surface that may influence response, um, as well as access patient access to these therapies. Uh, there's a huge disparity across the world in who can and can't access um, both standard of care therapies as well as access to clinical trial um, therapies too. Um, and that relates to the whole health economic aspects of, of cancer medicines which will also be discussed at this conference. I don't think so. I think the, 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 the promise of, of precision medicine, the promise of uh, cancer genomics uh, more widely is one where we hope to be able to develop better biomarkers that can classify responders into non-responding patients and, and offer the right drug for the right patient at the right time in a cost-effective manner. So the promise for me is one where this makes medicines more affordable, not less affordable. And really, that's the whole focus of this conference. So I think the sort of big excitement over the last 18 months or so has been the development of an understanding of how checkpoint inhibitors are, are working in the clinical setting, both in terms of mutational load, mutational burden, um, as well as um, also understanding how resistance to therapy occurs um, within cancer cells and, and, and how the host stroma influences response to checkpoint blockade. Um, and the two together um, will be discussed at this conference to, towards really a better understanding of who will and won't benefit from these treatments. Well, molecular biology absolutely plays a role in the diagnosis of cancer and the treatment of cancer today and ac across a wide range of tumor types. Lung cancer, which is my area, patients now have routine screening for a number of different um, somatic aberrations uh, within the context of uh, the Matrix program run by Gary Middleton in the UK, where patients will have 23 or 24 genes sequenced um, and um, we will have a much better understanding of the somatic events present in an individual cancer genome that will then tell us what individual trials, or clinical trials, a patient may be um, able to access. The latest emerging technology in personalized medicine really um, are centered around um, predominantly uh, cancer somatic genome sequencing, of individual genes, panels of genes, or in some cases, in some centers, whole exome sequencing where the whole coding genome will be sequenced. 